Hi, you're watching a special broadcast here on We Own Our Dying Lakes. I am Sana Khan. Bengaluru, once a city well known for its interconnected lake system, appears to be paying the price of development. Belandu Lake in Karnataka's capital has now gone from foam to fire as toxic smoke choked almost the entire city. This is at least the third time recently that the lake bed caught fire and the authorities do not seem to have any clue on how to curb this menace triggered due to illegal dumping of toxic waste. On the show today, we take a closer look at the problem, why it continues to persist, why the authorities are failing to act, also the wider implications of such instances over a period of time on the quality of life. But first, let's take a look at this detailed report sent by my colleague Nishchita Virendra from Bengaluru. It was an unusual sight. Toxic smoke billowed out of the sprawling Belandur Lake in India's tech city, Bengaluru. It began on Thursday evening when garbage strewn around the lake was set ablaze. Soon the fire rippled into the polluted lake. The smoke hit commuters and local residents. And then I saw a huge uh, cloud of smoke going up on the air and it was covering the whole apartment. And then I saw a, a huge big fire in the lake, in the center of the lake. This is not the first time, it's the first time it's highlighted actually. It's always this. And in this apartment, you can always check the residents in the surrounding apartment. It's always a complaint. But no action is not done, it's always people go. This is not the first time Bengaluru's water bodies have made it to the headlines. In August 2016, toxic froth in Belandur Lake burst into flames. In March 2016, thousands of dead fish washed ashore at Ulsur Lake. In 2015, foam from Belandur Lake spilled onto the streets. Another city lake, Yamlur, was on fire in May 2015. Experts say decades of excessive construction and industrialization have contaminated the city's lakes. The city, which once boasted of 261 lakes, is now left with less than 70. Despite public campaigns and tall promises, little has been done to save these dying lakes. Bureau report, we on. Now, the lake fire, which broke out on Thursday, triggered panic among motorists on the busy uh, Sarjapura main road. This was the second instance of a fire at this lake after May 2015, when deadly effluents sparked a fire. The state government, as well as the Union Environment Ministry, had deputed experts to test the water and to develop plans for cleaning Bengaluru's lakes after the fire two years ago. But there has been no implementation of any action plan so far. This time, the fire... Reports say was sparked off by a pile of burning garbage. It is not because of just dumping of garbage alone. Well, they can't. This has happened in the center of the tank. It is not dumping of garbage. <coughs> it is because of the STP, the sanitary water. BWSSB is not able to treat the entire sanitary which is being produced by us. Yes. Because of that, this water is let into it. All are chemicals. That is why this fire is happening. So now it's 100 percent on toast. Government has is taken a serious uh, concern about the uh, this uh, Belandur Lake, and uh, the committee uh, is, has been already formed. The expert committee by the government, and uh, a committee has uh, recommended uh, so many uh, recommendations, uh, especially. Uh, short-term measures and long-term measures, uh, and uh, short-term and now the lake is uh, 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 the custodian. Custodian is uh, BDA. Last uh, like 20 years, and uh, it got fired yesterday. At last of that uh, ends, and like uh, mixing of chemicals of these companies, like HL, NL, and other companies, and industries, and now it's uh, getting like uh, mixed in water, and it's forming of uh, chemical and it, uh, it is uh, uh, within uh, mixed with uh, like fire and it's uh, injurious to uh, humans also. All right, let me go across to Vion's uh, correspondent in Bengaluru right now, Nishchita Virendra, who joins me on the phone line. Nishchita, uh, what are the authorities now saying? What do they feel is, uh, you know, has resulted in the fire on the bed of this lake? 
But it almost seems like the authorities are habituated to giving answers to the questions of media as far as uh, the Belanduru Lake issue is concerned, Sana. Uh, so today, too, we uh, saw them come out, uh, do an inspection, assess the situation, and they went on to state that there will be uh, immediate change in the next three to four months. There will be visible change in the condition of uh, Belanduru Lake as uh, uh, they have already started preparations and hundreds of crores have been invested for STPs to be set up around uh, all the uh, apartments that are around uh, the, uh, the Belanduru Lake so that uh, untreated sewage is not let into the lake and water Treated water is used for other purposes within the apartment complex as well. Uh, but the local residents are still suspicious as to how much these authorities are really going to do. This is not an issue that has surfaced in the last one or two years or a few months ago. But for the last 25 years, it has persisted. And it is something that has been acknowledged by the state government as well. Big promises had been made even in the budget. A thousand crore rupees had been allotted uh, for the development of lakes. But no substantial move really taking place. Instead, we're seeing more and more encroachment of the lakes happen uh, because of the debris being dumped into the water body. Right, Nishita, do stay with me. Joining me right now is water conservationist and environmentalist uh, from New Delhi, Vimlendu Ja. Vimlendu, thanks so much for speaking to us here on We Own. Let me take in your opinion. Now, it's a well-known fact that this is a recurring uh, you know, scene in Bengaluru, in the lakes over there. Not just one lake, but another one as well, the Vartur Lake. But give us a sense of your understanding why this fire was so huge and why, uh, you know, uh, if you compare it to the previous times and why the situation uh, is deteriorating. See, if you look at the visuals that's actually been coming from the city of Bangalore for the last several years, it's actually a pathetic state of affairs of governance that we're talking about. Every few months, we actually see froth spilling over to the streets, to the, to, to the, to the roads of Bangalore. We've actually seen the similar fire in 2016, in 2015. This time around, it's actually very, very huge because, you know, there's, there's two things combined. We're talking about garbage. Uh, that caught fire and that also aggravated the entire uh, lake, which is almost dried up and toxic. Actually, that caught fire as well because there are several scientists who have done the study of this lake and several lakes around Bangalore. They say that there is methane that is trapped because, because of water hyacinth that is actually covering a lot of these polluted, toxic uh, uh, lakes that we're talking about. It's also a testimony. It's, it's, a, it's a great uh, you know, in a, in a way, a fantastic case of looking at how our governments have no political will. Uh, you know, month after month, year after year, they have actually made announcements and they have said that they actually want to do something about this because they did not wake up last time in, when this caught their attention or it caught at least media's attention. And imagine in January also there was a meeting that was supposed to, uh, you know, the, the action plan, the work was to begin in January for a year and a half. They've been actually planning to revive this particular lake. But nothing seems to have moved, and that's why we have arrived at a state where there is in the center of an IT city called Bangalore, uh, that a, a lake is on fire. So it's it's pathetic state. The impact that it has on ecology is one, because you're talking about a water body or a supposed right. water body on fire, and public health, which is at risk at the same time in Bangalore. And this is, by the way, just after a few days after India was actually ranked as one of the most polluted uh, country Absolutely. by my right Nishita coming to you you know a lot of uh, people in Bengaluru who've come from outside and they laud the weather of the city and they've actually settled there to work in Bengaluru uh, there's a lot being said right now on social media people very very disappointed after this incident asking for the authorities to uh, you know stand up and uh, put up come out with some concrete action plan uh, what's the sense that you're getting on the ground about people and their sentiments well as far as the people are concerned they're very uh, worried about the state of affairs in bengaluru it almost seems like uh, the state government is extremely happy with the kind of revenue that the city generates but at the same time enough money is not really being pumped into maintaining the city it's not enough to build buildings and flyovers it is more than that bengaluru had been ecologically sustainable for the longest time it had its own lake that supplied its water and it did not depend on any external source and that is the reason why these lakes these man-made tanks had been constructed across the city of Bengaluru and that is the reason why it's a green city, it is a cool city and despite all the pollution it has 
it still had one of the better living conditions uh, in India. But with the rapid encroachment of these lakes, of these water bodies being depleted to such an extent that the only intention seems to be killing the lake so that it can be uh, uh, encroached upon and uh, more space can be made for buildings to come up has really become a cause of concern for Bengalurians as they are worried that there is really no intention behind the officials at all. They do not intend to better the situation in any way. We have been interacting with the local residents all through the day and they claim that they have witnessed uh, the lake size shrinking every single day uh, and uh, they are seeing debris uh, being dumped around the lake so that it shrinks and at the same time garbage is burnt around the lake. Uh, it has multiple implications on people, even the livelihood of many local residents. Of uh, It used to be at one point in time one of the suburban areas of Bengaluru. And a lot of uh, locals still depend on fishing in this lake for their livelihood. So killing the lake is even killing their livelihood, Sana. Right. Absolutely. Uh, Vimlendu, coming back to you, you know, shocking apathy and oh, serious yeah. neglect is what we see in this particular case. But to quote the environment minister of the state, when, uh, when he was asked about whether the fire was due to high pollution levels, he said that cannot make such a passing remark. We'll first have to study the reasons. Whereas it's evident that there is, uh, you know, toxic material being dumped in this lake. There's phosphorus, there's oil uh, combined with the garbage and the seaweed around it. That all is catching fire and causing massive pollution. They're not even ready to admit it, uh, uh, first of all, as far as uh, yesterday's case is concerned. How can we expect action? Absolutely right. And I'm not very surprised because this is what our environment minister actually said a couple of days ago when the global study on air quality came out. He said, well, it's inconclusive. While WHO global think tanks are actually saying that our air is polluted and there are people who are dying because of our, uh, uh, of our air pollution, here is our environment minister who is not even ready to acknowledge. Imagine a couple of days ago, we were actually doing, you and I were talking about oil spill, and then the shipping minister said there's no oil spill. So I think our political class, I don't know what they're smoking, because they are failing to acknowledge the problem so that they don't even have to imagine a solution. The first thing is to acknowledge that there is a problem. Even a common man, not a scientist, not a minister, if you look at these two lakes that we have, the two prominent lakes of Bangalore, they will tell you how polluted these lakes are. There's froth, there's toxins coming out and is visible to every common person. You don't need a fancy lab to tell you how polluted these lakes in Bangalore are. So it's very shocking and shameful for our union minister to say, oh, well, it's I can't say whether the lake is polluted. Indeed, it is polluted. And rather than actually saying that it's inconclusive or he can't really, uh, you know, make such a passing remark, he needs to step in. What is an emergency action? You know, in a, in a state of affairs that we're talking about, you know, an, a, a beach gets uh, contaminated. He doesn't want to speak up. Here, a lake is on fire. He doesn't want to speak up. Why have an environment minister? Why have an environment ministry? Why even really have a rhetoric or a conversation around environment? So it's, I'm extremely angry and agitated at the kind of irresponsible statement made by so-called minister who is responsible for environment when he doesn't even understand the environment, I, I must say. Right. Uh, but, you know, there have been efforts uh, that the country is making in terms of improving the uh, you know, quality of water in the lakes. Uh, we'll be talking about that in just a bit. But first, let's talk about the other cities and what the condition of the lakes there uh, is. Berendur is not just an isolated case. India is failing miserably at preserving its water bodies. The condition of lakes in various cities of the country is in a bad shape. For instance, the Hussain Sagar Lake in Hyderabad. It has seen alarmingly high levels of pollution. The state government there reportedly spent over 280 crore rupees to clean it up, but met with limited success. Total dissolved solids recorded in this lake in February this year was almost eight times the permissible limit. From 1,600 hectares, the lake has now shrunk to a mere 4.4 square kilometers. Now, over in Srinagar, the famous Dal Lake, which has spread over 22 square kilometers at the beginning of this century, has shrunk to 11.45 square kilometers, a 298 crore rupee project there to clean up the Dal Lake was started in 2005. But again, the results haven't been promising. Identical conditions prevail in cities throughout the country. Vimlindu, what's the solution? The money is being pumped in, but uh, we see there's not much improvement. So what's the way to go forward? I think there needs to be a, a consolidated plan and a political will. At the end of the day, announcing something 
or really making a plan on paper is not good enough. That plan is as good as nothing unless and until there is action that is taken on the ground. And we've seen the same thing in the case of not just lakes, but also in the case of rivers. Just last week, a National Green Tribunal actually told uh, the centre and the state governments that not a single drop of water uh, of Ganga has actually been cleaned after spending over 2,000 crores. So corruption is one thing, which is the monetary corruption that we're talking about, but at the same time also lack of political will and really institutionalising and understanding that this is an urgent situation. One of the things that's actually keeping India behind or making India suffer the most, right. and purely from an economic terms, mm -hmm. from GDP, mm -hmm. by the way, because of air quality, there's 3% loss of GDP that we actually suffer in, in a country like India. So our governments needs, need to understand and really take it to another level, and that level of action, rather than just you know pushing files. And that's what is needed, a pan-India plan on environment, rather than just looking at environment as an obstruction to development, because that's the most convenient argument that the political class puts forth, that why care about environment? Environment sometimes really is bad for development. No, if there's no environment, right. imagine people dying. It's no more Absolutely. a romantic... Absolutely. I, I get your point, Vimlendu. Let me go across to my colleague Nishtita Virendra, who's standing by in Bengaluru uh, at this point. Nishtita, let's go back and focus on what's happening in Bengaluru at this point, a city that, you know, once was known for the well-connected, interconnected lake system. Uh, do experts there feel that it's now paying the price, uh, you know, of de uh, for development? Absolutely. I, I, experts even feel the development probably shouldn't uh, be the word used for the way Bengaluru has grown uh, indiscriminately. I have, in fact, uh, one such expert right here with me. I have uh, Mr. Yelapa Reddy, uh, who was uh, the Secretary of the Environment and Ecology Department of Karnataka. He's a former IFS officer, and he's also part of the Belanduru Restoration Committee. Uh, Mr. Yelapa Thank you so much for joining us on this show. First of all, I would like to ask you, it is almost becoming mundane for our uh, stakeholders, for our politicians, for our government, for the BWSSP, for the BESCOM, for everyone to really say that they will be doing something in the next three, four months, you will see some result. We've heard this hundreds of times over the last 25 years. Is anything happening on ground? You're part of the Restoration Committee. What really is the response from that? Nothing is happening. Nothing is happening. The problem is multiplying in a geometrical proportion. And the permissions have been granted for growth and growth and growth, thinking that the growth means something without quality of life. And what is the quality of life? So what is the comfort? So if you look at the transformation has taken place from last three decades, the Cancer spots, made man created cancer spots are growing like anything. Cancer spots means every type of a right. waste generated by right. human so, activity. So, but, but as the committee, there are multiple committees looking into Belanduru's restoration as well as the restoration of other lakes like Iblur, Vartur, etc. Uh, what has been the response of the government authorities every time you approach them? There have been numerous complaints over the last several years. See, what happened, you know, I was also one of the sitting members along with the sitting judges. And we conducted lok adalats. Mm -hmm. In every adalat, we invited the top most officers, starting from principal secretary to the BDA commissioner, to the BBMP commissioner, to uh, all other uh, first level, second level, third level officers. And we used to apprise the Mr. Justice N.K. Patil, Justice Kail Minjunath, Justice uh, Dagbon Das, mm -hmm. and I was uh, technical member of that committee, we, only right. two members. Every time we used to alert them, mm -hmm. inform them, the dangers which the government is going to face, the citizens has to face mm -hmm. from last one and a half decade. Mm -hmm. But it has made a very little impact mm -hmm. with the system. So it's a systemic failure. Right. So we are talking about the smart city, we are talking about the clean cities, etc. The money given for this act, for this thing, mm -hmm. even in 2017 and 18 budget, mm -hmm. if you look at the budget given by the government of India mm -hmm. and the state government for these activities, is very, very meager. Mm -hmm. 
and nothing substantial can be uh, evolved or developed and no commitment. So the officers who are coming there, you know, they can understand a little bit about the problem. The moment they start thinking and applying their mind and preparing a DPR and various other things, they will be transferred. Another gentleman will take his own sweet time. So like that, you know, the whole thing has been prolonged, prolonged from last one and a half decade. We alerted about this danger about a decade back. We, we told them there will be a methane, there will be a volcano, and the amount of 40 years anaerobic condition of the biomethane gas accumulated may just take off anytime, anytime. So we informed them and also the precautions to be taken. So some, some sort of a vested interest. They delayed the treatment plan from last three years by going to the court. Court has given a stay order without even looking. Then the people has to go and agitate and vacate the stay. The government t t tolerates all kinds of this type of things, you know, without a firm commitment about. Right. Right. Well. Right. Uh, also, uh, Bengaluru has been a city. It has been a growing hub. It has been one of the fastest growing cities in the world, not just India. And we've seen people coming in from different parts of the world looking for jobs, looking for a better quality of life here, for looking for uh, education as well. Do you think that such instances really degrade the image of brand Bengaluru? Definitely. No, see, the amount of the, the, the problem which we analyzed mm -hmm. about, uh, from last three months, a group of doctors and myself vis visited Bellendur and Vartur and the entire habitat there. And we assessed the quality of a breathable air, bio aerosols, chemical aerosols generated there, how it is going to affect, and what section of the community is going to be affected. My only concern now, the most vulnerable group is the children who are living around, who are living around. Yes. so it is going to affect the cognitive system for no fault of them mm -hmm. so the cognitive system means their brain starts uh, dysfunctioning mm -hmm. the, the the lungs will not will cease growth even at the, uh, up to the age of 12 13 the lungs will keep growing mm -hmm. so once if they inhale this mm -hmm. it blocks the growth because of the alveoli, it will go and just lodge in the alveoli. The growth will be seized. Mm -hmm. Then the air will come down. Right. All right. Uh, in fact, those are rather alarming uh, facts that uh, were, uh, you know, being referred to by Dr. Yelapa Reddy there uh, in Bengaluru. Uh, we'll try and go back to him in just a bit. But uh, Vimalendu, coming to you now. Uh, the uh, now the concern is the health issues that you know people uh, that one is looking at living in a city like Bengaluru where the air pollution levels are as it is extremely high one of the highest that we see in the country uh, what sort of impact could these instances the rising air pollution levels have on uh, the city the people living in the city if we talk about the next few years to come see of course uh, one is Is the impact. So it's one, you know, it's not just about, about inconvenience anymore. We're actually talking about there are several studies that have been conducted in different parts of the world. In our country as well, last year Greenpeace came up with a study which said that, you know, uh, almost 12 lakh people die in, in our country because of air pollution uh, issues. And imagine 92% of, of our population actually lives in, in bad air situations. By the way, that report that has actually come. Uh, the global study, air quality study that we are talking about, you know, of 20, list of 20 most polluted cities in the world, 10 are from our country. So, you know, it's it's a it's a very tragic situation that despite these reports that's been coming out year after year, our government is not really responding, not right. really taking okay. seriously. Imagine in China, they have been actually they, China is another very very polluted uh, country, but they've been able to really maintain and then seize the growth in, in India since 1990 there's been a 48 percent growth 
in, 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 in casualty because of air pollution. So it's very, very tragic that we're talking about PM 2.5 levels and PM 10 levels are at alarming levels. We've Absolutely. Seen that. I think this oh. takes us back to the point that you earlier mentioned as well, the lack of political will. You know, money might have been pumped uh, into such big projects, but there uh, seems to be a lack of political will to take them forward. Do stay with me. Let's just also take a moment and talk about the rivers in the country. They're no different. The central government's ambitious project to clean the Ganga has received much flack from the National Green Tribunal. An RTI reply from the PMO last year revealed that 20% of the 30 700 crore rupee fund that was allocated in the first two years of the program hasn't been utilized. The NGT in January noted that not a single drop uh, of water from the river Ganga had been cleaned. It's also mulling a probe to check whether untreated sewage was being released into the Ganga through 30 drains on the rivers Haridwar or now stretch. But in fact, there's been international success stories from which one can learn. The River Thames in London was brought back from the dead. The river where the levels of oxygen had fallen so low that it had become a dead river is today teeming with over 100 species of fish. Another river which is cited as a successful example is the Rhine. Again in Europe, the river that passes through as many as six countries has been now restored to its past glory. Vimlindu, let's come to you for one last reaction. Do you think then, you know, international partnerships is something that India should be looking at at this point? Uh, we have partnered, uh, you know, earlier with a company from America as well. So why not look at that option? Do you think that is something that could work? See, we have been partnering uh, with several countries already last two decades. If you look at Yamuna Action Plan and Ganga Action Plan, that almost started in 1993. So imagine 30 years of Ganga Action Plan, uh, and, the, and Ganga is more polluted than, than ever before. Yamuna is polluted than ever before. I don't think it's, it's a knowledge deficit that we're talking about. It brings me back to that question and that comment that I made, lack of political will. Imagine right now if an RT can clean the Yamuna, because in the name of cleaning Yamuna and cleaning Ganga, they're actually doing Yamuna RTs at different parts, rather than picking up the garbage, or rather than really going where the sewage is, where fixing the sewage treatment plants. Jap Japanese were involved, uh, World Bank is involved, there's several groups the germans are involved there's so many of our ministers and our experts that have actually done world tours gone and studied these river bodies and river action plans but nothing seems to have changed on the ground because there's rampant rampant corruption there's there's no governance structure imagine there's so much money and so much uh, uh, you know namami gange and namami yamuna and all that but in reality imagine the court of our country says not a single drop of Ganga has actually been cleaned. And right. imagine Ganga and Yamuna, these are the capital rivers that we are actually talking about. The, the Absolutely. Many... Absolutely, Vimlindu. We are completely running out of time. Uh, to Indians, water indeed is holy. But what is the country doing to clean its rivers, to clean its lakes? Uh, this leads to, uh, you know, losses, economic as well as social in the long run. Uh, thanks so much, Vimlindu, as well as my colleague Nishchita, along with uh, Dr. Reddy there for joining us uh, on this story. We are taking a very short break. News and updates follow in just a bit. Stay tuned.